Yo guys, what's going on? This is Lockdown Stash. I am Tarek. Thank you for tuning into this video. Today is going to be a video based on my go-to anime films and series. So we're going to be starting with showing and recommending old to new. So I'm going to go through films and I'm going to show you some series as well. Things that I think that are really good. Things that mean a lot to me. And I would say definitely that you guys should check out. So without further ado, let's get to it. Right, so we're going to start off with, I think it has got to be my favourite anime of all time, Fist of the North Star. Now, as you can see, I still got this video. I still got this VHS. This is one of the first animes I had ever seen. We were introduced to this at a time, I would say 1992, this was actually released to us. Um, it's from uh, 1986. Uh, but when it came out, came down to the West, especially the UK, it would, I found it in the local, well, I should say my brother found it in the local video shop. And it would be, you know, what is this? It's an 18, an 18 certificate. Like, it's a cartoon. But, you know, with animation in itself, there's a difference between animation and cartoon. Cartoons, I refer to the fact that they are things like the Warner Brothers cartoons, like the um, Looney Tunes, and then you've got, you know, you've got your Tom and Jerry's, you've got things like that. Those are cartoons, you stick them on, you have a laugh, it's funny, whatever happens, that's all good. But this is actual adult content. Now, adult content being subject matters, uh, violence in it, the extremities that sometimes it goes to, even nudity as well. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just a different level. So you can imagine being a kid and seeing something like this is like, uh, what did I just watch? Where it actually says an epic assault on the senses. It actually says that on the bottom there and it literally was an epic assault on my senses. Yes, as a kid, an epic assault on my senses. When I was eight years old, man, I saw this film. But it's, it's, it's brilliant, you know, the film itself, they've done such a good job because it's actually from a manga and a series. Now the series dives deeper into the lore, into uh, the different characters that are in this post-apocalyptic world, uh, which is very reminiscent of Mad Max. Uh, now, if you're thinking how, you'll see by the costume design, you'll see by some of the, uh, the nomads that are out there. It is very, very Mad Max, but they took it up a notch and they gave it the fantasy feel. It is gorgeous. The music, the charisma, the martial arts aspect, the, the, the revenge aspect. It just keeps on giving. Fistled on All Star keeps on giving. And I'm happy to literally say that this here is one of the greatest things that I actually own. And even to a point where it actually still has the stickers and the labels for you to actually apply onto the VHS itself. They're still intact. So that's Fistle of the North Star for you. So next we have Vampire Hunter D. Now Vampire Hunter D, this was once again by um, the same studios that would bring you Ninja Scroll, Fistle of the North Star. It's one of those things where I first saw a hybrid uh, vampire and human hybrid which is the character D and I believe D stands for Dampir which is what the hybrids are known for. Now directed uh, Toyu Ashida this very gothic very eerie the character D as soon as you see him you're like okay I want to know more about this guy. The manga as well the the art in the manga is so gorgeous. I think there's a new hardback um, of the manga coming out like a volume one, they're re-releasing it. It's coming out in August, I believe. I've already got it on pre-order because I don't have the manga and I really, really want to get it because of the art in it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Vampire Hunter D is one of those films. You can grab this for cheap now. It hasn't been released on Blu-ray over here in the UK, but the DVD is available. You can find it on places like eBay, unfortunately. You know, it's really hard to track these films down. So 
get this one. Next is uh, an epic film called Detonator Organ. Now Detonator Organ was the first time I saw mechas, but not how you know these massive mechas to be. This was actually something where you tap into your subconscious and the mechas are actually, they're, they're aliens. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, this is just like Transformers. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, but these guys don't transform, man. These guys, they're scary. Two and a half hours of anime action. It dives deep into the subconscious, into the dreaming mind, into people who are very imaginative. And Organ is uh, a protector who crash lands over here and there's an invasion coming to Earth. And Organ decides that there's, you know, there's a connection between the main character and Organ. Very serious anime. Very serious anime. There's no jokes to be had in this. And one of the most overlooked animes, in my opinion. Two and a half hours. First time I saw this, I think I was about 12 years old. You get hold of it. Once again, it's one of those films that you can get from eBay. I don't know how much it would be. I, I imagine it wouldn't be that much. But check out Detonated Her Organ. Once again, it's it's around that same era of the previous two films, Ninja Scroll. Now, Ninja Scroll, you mentioned Ninja Scroll to anyone of the generation when anime first came to the UK, to the West, people know about Ninja Scroll. You know about Ninja Scroll, you know about Akira, which I'll get to. You know about Vampire Hunter D, you know about Fist of the North Star. It goes without saying. Ninja Scroll, it's, a, it's about a, a vagabond, you should say, traveling a ronin, does things for money, Jubei Kibagami, um, and he's out here minding his own business and he gets caught up in uh, the Devils of Kimon. So yeah, basically when a small village succumbs to a terrible plague, teams of ninjas are sent to investigate and realize that all is not as it seems. Ambushed. They are wiped out by a fearsome man monster with incredible powers, leaving only one alive, Kagero, a beautiful female ninja whose touch can bring instant death. Jubei saves us from a fate worse than death and unwittingly becomes drawn into the web of treachery. He is soon faced with the greatest challenge, an enemy for whom death holds no fear, with the power to destroy Jubei's world. And there's love, there's emotion, there's the, the, the sad bitterness, the um, how women were used in this, in this era, in this world of ninja. Brilliant fight scenes, amazing characters. And this one is available on Blu-ray. So you can track this down and I'd say definitely track it down guys. Okay, so we're gonna go to a film that everyone is no stranger to, to be honest. And when I say everyone, I'm pretty confident in saying that, is Akira. Now, Akira, it set the benchmark for animation and storytelling. The, the trademark bike that we see of Kaneda, his bike. I've even got a model over here in this cabinet of Kaneda on his bike by the one and only Todd McFarlane. That, oh my God. It is, you know, um, Katsushiro Otomo is a genius. The manga is brilliant. This film sets the benchmark of animation. It is still contains some of the best animation you will see to this day. And I have to say that being released in 1987, it's hard to believe that this film is that old when you watch it. Brilliant, brilliant. I'm not gonna go too far into uh, the story elements, but it's got a lot to do with experimentation, got a lot to do with conspiracies, it's got a lot to do with telekinesis. You have to watch it, man. Akira. So now we're going to go to Ghost in the Shell. Now, Ghost in the Shell is it's got to do with artificial intelligence in a shell, in a body, a uh, robotic body, cybernetic body. It's got a lot to do with hacking. It's got a lot to do with um, viruses. And so Major Kusanagi is a part of a elite team, I should say, that work n uh, not for the government, but they're like hired. They're like an independent squad, but the government relies on them. 
because they are the only ones who can deal with uh, cyber terrorism. Features some amazing scenes in this. Uh, and not to mention part two. Now part two, Ghost in the Shell Innocence, is by Mamoru Oshii again. The eerie music, the eerie soundtrack, the eerie opening, you know, it's got that distinctive feel. You know when Ghost in the Shell is on TV, if it comes on in the background, you're like, wait, hold on, what's that, Ghost in the Shell? Uh, you hear this soundtrack somewhere else. That's from Ghost in the Shell. It goes without saying, man. And this, this one here, part two, features one of the best scenes, in my opinion, in any film, in any anime, one of the best, I should say. It is a scene that is so well written. It, it makes you question it as it's going on. It makes you think it's though, what's this bloody old Groundhog Day, this loop that keeps going on. And it's when the uh, investigators walk into the puppet master's lair, you can say, this mansion. And they go in one time and things seem weird. And now all of a sudden the guys are put back into the starting position where they're approaching this mansion again. And it goes over, but each time it goes over, there's something different that happens in the scene. It's one of the best well-written, mind-boggling sequences anyone will see. Take my word for it. So yeah, we're gonna go now with a film which I think is very, it's highly underrated, Paprika. Now Paprika's got to do with uh, dream terrorists. Um, and they are, Paprika is an alter ego of one of the characters who dives deep into the dream world to find criminals. Now, if it sounds familiar to you, it should do because that's where Christopher Nolan's idea for Inception came from. And I think it's a real crying shame when uh, material comes out, you know, a film like Inception comes out, everyone thinks, oh my God, it's absolutely brilliant. Now I'm not taking anything away from Christopher Nolan. I'm just saying that you need to, you know, respect the source material and you need to uh, pay tribute to it. Um, and that didn't happen. So if you're out there and you think Inception is a brilliant made film, which it is, I'm not saying it isn't, but check out the source material because this is nuts. Check it out, Paprika. To, to, so we're going to go to a couple of short films, which leads on to a feature film by the same filmmaker, Makoto Shinkai. Makoto Shinkai, known for his, how shall I explain it, excruciatingly detailed animation. It, I, I've read that it takes some somewhere between five to six years, maybe even ten years to make one film of his. Now, might be a bit exaggeration on the ten year thing, but I've heard that it actually really does take that long for this guy and his team because he doesn't have a big team. I think it's about 10 people and he delivers these animes, these these beautiful masterpieces uh, and they don't even need to be that long. Now this here is the Shinkai collection. This is when I was first introduced to Makata Shinkai's work. Uh, contains something called the Voices of a Distant Star and the place promised in our early days. So each film, um, makes up 60 minutes so all together you've got uh, two hours worth of films there and then you've got the extras which are 115 minutes so just under two hours I'll tell you about voices of a distant star now voices of a distant star is about i should say about a girl and a boy they're both graduated from school but they're going on to now further ed education they're looking at their careers one's going to be this pilot but out 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 of space and uh, the girl is on earth doing her thing and now being drawn to each other and now all of a sudden their paths take you know they, they take different paths so they're communicating by text message but how long it takes for the text message to get from earth to space and from space to earth is anywhere between one to two years and there's no other way of communicating nothing like that there's wars going out and going on in space with the guys fighting and then the girls on earth she does want to move on and she's still thinking about this guy it's absolutely beautiful when you watch it it really draws you in it really pulls those heartstrings man um so if you can get hold of the shinkai collection unfortunately it is extremely hard to get hold of this you probably find it on ebay once again at ridiculous prices it hasn't to my knowledge been released on blu-ray but what you can get hold of uh, Makata Shinkai's work is an extraordinary love 
uh, story called Your Name, Call Me By Your Name. It goes by different titles, but that's Your Name. I got this one on Blu-ray. This once again is about parallel universes and girl and a boy, they connect. They feel as though they have been in this place before they have met each other. It's something there that, you know, destinies uh, entwined love, the calling for love. And it, it, it calls for both parties to search for one another, but they're actually in parallel universes, which is heartbreaking, beautiful at the same time. And it makes you think that Makata Shinkai is, has maybe, you know, with his films, he's definitely someone who's encountered a heartbreak maybe one too many times or just once and it shows in his work but it's such moving material which is no other way to put it and it's, it's beautiful man and this is why these are some of these films that you need to check out so now we're going to go to series now one of my favorite series of all time is definitely full metal alchemist now full metal alchemist there's some people who have slept on this who haven't even checked it out. It's got to do with alchemy. It's got to do with magic. It's got to do with investigation. It's about two brothers, Ed and Al, Alric. They tried to bring their mother back from the dead uh, by casting spells. And uh, there is always a price to pay, an equivalent exchange. Now, to bring their mother back, unfortunately, Al had lost his actual physical form now the only way ed could save him is by armor to bring him back to life but it didn't work so only his soul is in that that suit of armor and um that was the equivalent exchange to do something to bring someone back to life something in equivalence needs to be given it's heartbreaking, man. Some of the stuff in this in, the, in this series hits hits hard. I would say one of the series every every person who wants to get into anime or every anime fan should not sleep on. Uh, now, yeah, there's loads of anime out there. You know, there's Naruto, there's One Piece, there's all these things, but this isn't a long series. So, 64 episodes in total. This is 64 episodes in total, and that that's a set that I managed to get for about, I think it was 15, 20 pounds, brand new from Zavi. What are you waiting for, man? You guys need to check this out. The animation, uh, the characters. It, that's, that's one anime that keeps on giving and every episode is something that makes you want the next episode even more. And uh, I would say that don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on the former Archimist, man. Check that out. Right, next one be my favorite filmmaker in anime sense it is uh, Shinichiro Watanabe's Cowboy Bebop now Cowboy Bebop you know Spike Spiegel and the gang on the hunt for bounties they're bounty hunters it's a cyberpunk type of world but not OTT cyberpunk you know it, it's got wicked humor in it it's got amazing action in it the, the, the soundtrack in this as well Shinichiro Watanabe he's one of those guys he's a filmmaker who loves to capture moments and movements to the T it's like choreographing an amazing Hong Kong fight scene Shinichiro Watanabe is is, is that he is the Sama Hong in my opinion the Sama Hong Yin Wu Ping of the anime world. I can't talk about this enough. So this one, Cowboy Bebop, you need to check it out. They even made a feature length film as well, which is equally as good, man. It just, it's just wicked. The characters in this alone, you need to check it out. Right, uh, another one now, a series called Gungrave. Gungrave, a lot of people haven't heard of it at all. I call this Supernatural Gangster. That's what this is. They bring in the mafia, the gangster side of things, and cross fantasy with that. So fantasy and reality coming into one. And yeah, you think to yourself, yeah, but you know, anime films do that now. No, 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 no. This is an actual gangster anime series. And it's about 26 or 27 episodes in this. And they even made video games. I can't say a lot because it does spoil it. But it shows you how two friends become mortal enemies because they took different routes in life 
they you know one betrays the other and then the one is brought back from the dead vengeful spirit i should say but by a scientist who was responsible for developing weapons for the mafia so that's why you know gun grave um and the main character's name is brandon heat and they refer to him as beyond the grave it's one of the best animes as well with uh, the english dub the english dub suits this so well compared to the japanese uh, and compared to a lot of the anime that's coming out recently in the english dub sometimes it's just so bad i'd rather watch it in japanese but because this one it features western characters the the voice acting in it is really good it's a gun grave that's something i highly recommend now talking about series and talking about shinichiro watanabe this is my favorite anime i i, I did say that about uh fist of the north star as a feature length film but this is my favorite anime series now once again this is about 26 27 episodes by shinichiro watanabe the same maker of cowboy bebop it is the one and only samurai champloo which i love so much i actually got shinichiro watanabe to actually sign this film at a comic con that was happening in the uk a uh, good few years back that is one of my prized possessions i did not hesitate i did not i needed to meet the guy the guy's just a genius man he's so effing cool samurai champloo champloo basically means an odd combination and you have an odd combination you have a girl Fu, who's you know she doesn't know what to do with herself she's looking for the sunflower samurai she comes across a jin who's a traditional samurai very disciplined and then you have mugen who is literally infinity mugen means infinity so infinity in his um character in his movements in in how unorthodox and all over the place he is when it comes down to fighting the fight scenes in this alone it's something to go and watch this anime for it is on netflix at the moment so i don't know what you guys are actually waiting for if you haven't seen samurai champloo you need to go check this out these are some of the i, I would say i would pick this i'm sorry to say over a lot of the anime that is coming out nowadays there isn't a lot of anime that comes out that is less than 30 episodes you know they go on to hundreds even what thousands now and i ain't got time for that to be honest i know it's really good people are dedicated to anime but what i do miss is an original film feature length anime film come out and blow us away with distinctive animation in it nowadays all the animation it looks the same netflix's animes i'm sorry to say they, yeah they're giving us anime but they all look so lazy in comparison to what these films did years ago and these series did years ago and now going back to samurai champloo it features i gotta say the greatest soundtrack in any anime trip hop combined with jazz it's mad it's 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 samurai martial arts cross hip-hop and new job is god rest his soul when i've heard these beats in this this anime i had to hunt down those soundtracks and i can say that i'm so glad i got hold of those four soundtracks that make up this whole series um uh, you need to check it out man it's you become so attached to these characters my favorite character in it is mugen by far some people say that's unfair you can't have her as a favorite character because he's, he's literally everyone loves him but man he's just so friggin good so I'm going to go to one other one that a lot of people don't know about. Actually, two is Karas. Now, Karas, this is part one, uh, the prophecy and part two, uh, the revelation. Karas was the first anime I saw after a long time that was fresh, that it came out and it, God, man, it, 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 I was left speechless when I saw the opening segment uh, to Karas. And if anyone wants to argue saying, nah, there's no other opening segment to any anime this is the best one da, 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 da. okay everyone is entitled to their opinion but this opening segment and the soundtrack and the music to caress the prophecy in my opinion is my favorite the opening my favorite to any anime 
and I'll put it, I'll, I'll attach it to this video. Check out the opening. Right guys, so you checked out the opening to the prophecy and um, I, it was the first time, you know, this anime was the first time I did see hand-drawn anime mixed with 3D anime. 
uh, animation, sorry. And the way they combined it, they didn't go too lazy with it. At moments where they wanted their animation to be incredibly mind boggling, they went 3D, but then a lot of the effects and a lot of the backgrounds were still 2D, which really stood out. And that's the thing with anime nowadays on the Netflix originals, they're very lazy. A lot of it is 3D anime with, I'd say about 70% of it is 3D, a CG type anime with you know, 30%, if that hand drawn. Which is, you know, I know they have to push out, they have time restraints, they have to push out a series or film quick time, but it does take it away from the magic, man. I don't want to just be watching an anime for the sake of saying, yeah, I'll watch anime. I want to be watching something like a, a decent anime that the animation is distinctive. It's different from the thing I just saw the other day. The animation to this is different from the animation to this. This is how it needs to be. This is how it should be. Um, so Karas basically, it's a modern day Tokyo where humans and spirits, ghostly uh, apparitions and demons, both seen and unseen, coexist in two overlapping dimensions. But it basically is maintained by a guardian known as the Karas, which is which translates to crow, a raven-like creature and its masters. Uh, but now the balance is under threat from a former Karas named Echo. Disgusted by human arrogance, Echo has turned his back on the ancient laws he helped uphold uh, for so long and is determined to seize power and bring order to the city's streets. Uh, now you've got standing against Echo is a spiritual entity who represents the will of the people, accompanied by a newly risen Karas of her own. So it, it, it is nuts. I had to hunt down the soundtrack to this one as well. And when an anime does that or film does that to me, it really is special. You might like some songs from a film. So yeah, it's all right, it is good. You get the soundtrack, sound, soundtrack is kind of, you know, two out of 15 tracks. You're like, okay, why, why did I even spend money? I do not regret spending my money on the soundtracks for both this and Samurai Champloo. Uh, now, okay, well, anyway, I've gone off a little bit, got a little too passionate. I'm gonna talk about one more series, which is called Gaiva. Now, the Bio Booster Armor. Now, Gaiva is uh, something I was introduced. I saw Gaiva first um, on VHS. There were half an hour segments on tape. Now, that was expensive back then to buy uh, VHS. That was about 15, 20 quid only for half an hour. And my local video shop only had part one and part two. And bear in mind, that was literally a series. Now, I can't remember how many episodes. It's been quite a while since I actually saw this. Uh, since I sat down and watched this, I think I need a refresher again. So yeah, Giver is about the the, the Giver is a unit which is an ultimate weapon, a mysterious mecha of alien design. When activated, the unit interfaces with human subjects, transforming them into powerful combatants. Now, when a high school kid gets hold of one that is astray, it literally is a unit that attaches itself to today should we say a human host, sort of like the symbiote you know, like Venom, and it becomes one with that person. They they can call upon it and it's this armor that comes out and attaches to the body and giving them su supreme power and abilities, incredible speed, incredible reflexes, uh, strength. It gives you all of that. And, um, you know, I, I, I love this series so much. I even got myself the figure of Giver, which is right over here. When the West, they remade Giver in that, well, they did a live action version of it. It was called, I remember when it first came out on VHS, it's called Mutronics. Uh, but then when we were watching it, we we're like, oh, well, that, that's Giver. But then they brought out Giver, the dark hero. Now the costumes were absolutely ridiculous because when the guys, your actors are dressed up as a Zoinoids, you saw the rubber, you know, of the blades and their hands flapping around and it looked ridiculous. But the martial arts in it was insane. When when the guy, uh, you know, the performer would come out and he'd be fighting these Zoinoids. I wanted to watch it just for that, how he took out these Zoinoids. And uh, funny enough, the guy, the dark hero, uh, the I think the director's name was James Wong. And he was also behind a film called uh, Drive with Mark Dacascos. And the fight scenes, how they how they shot, 
is very similar because it's done by the same guy. But anyway, Guyver, if you don't know, now you know. So I know I went off a little uh, a little bit from old to new because I went back to old, but I just had a look at the piles that were over here and I had, I had to show you guys. But those are my recommendations, guys, for anime films and some of the series. You should be able to get a hold of them. Some of them have been released on Blu-ray. I know Ghost in the Shell, Samurai Champloo, but Samurai Champloo is available on Netflix if you guys have Netflix. Uh, majority of, I don't know who doesn't have Netflix. Check it out. Akira Blu-ray, Ninja Scroll Blu-ray, Karas, not Blu-ray at the moment in the, in, the, in the West or even in the UK. Guyver, unfortunately, they haven't, which they really should. I mean, yeah, yeah, guys. So thank you for tuning into this video. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for uh, listening to my uh, recommendations and uh, my, um, you know, my go-tos. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content. And until next time, I am Tarek. This is Lockdown Stash. Peace.